Morning everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and I've had some special requests really for some outfits for Luna um, and this time it's actually an outfit for her alter ego which is Alfie. So today we're going to be making um, Alfie's shirt which is this one here, this blue gingham one here. It's actually in book one. I did struggle to find it actually. I was looking through and because it's not on the picture like the other characters and outfits are, couldn't find it, but I knew I'd made it, so <laughs> I had to have a quick look. So I had a look on the Cool Crafting website, which is coolcrafting.co.uk, which is um, the shop owned by Sarah Peel, who's the author of the books and the designer, um, and found that um, Alfie is in book one, and he's actually on page 58, if you've got your book. So this is the shirt we're going to be making. Little one, little um, collared shirt here, and it's got a yoke as well on the back. So um, grab your supplies and we'll get started and we'll have a look and see what we can do. First of all, we're going to talk about fabrics. So I've got Luna here with me. She's in her lovely ballet outfit with her little lacy knickers on, um, not to, um, to show off her modesty. Um, but um, I've got, um, so I've just got Luna here just to help me just to um, talk about scale again. And I know I did this um, when we were making the Daisy's twirling dress um, and we talked about scale of fabrics against the characters because a big print such as I've got on this dress here isn't always great on a smaller character because it needs to be in keeping with the size of the character. So what I've done here is I've um, I've got um, some selections of fabrics. Now these are all actually thrifted from um, or recycled from my husband's old work shirts. So there's a video on my channel. I'll put a, I'll put a link up here for you so you can have a look at that. Um, and that tells you or shows you how you can cut down your um, shirts or old work shirts, even if you found a charity shop, um, <clears throat> in order to make fabric, um, really good quality fabric for your, for your Luna shirt. Okay, so thrifted fabric is great for these types of characters because you often don't need that much, not like making a dress or a full size shirt. And when you're actually doing the, the, um, the fabrics that you want to do, we, we need something that's going to layer well because um, the Lunas, need to have the trousers and the jacket and the waistcoat if you want to make those over the top so um a shirt for a shirting fabric if you're looking at new shirting fabric is way more preferable to something than say quilting cotton which would be too thick for this because you've got lots of little seams to try and do on the hems for the sleeves and also for the bottom and also getting the collar right so i just think that if you try and use fabric that's already been used for a shirt or that is a shirting the other thing you can use obviously is is a Liberty Lawn, um, so a lawn fabric, L-A-W-N, um, and that is just like a really fine cotton, really nice and thin, a little bit thinner than shirting fabric, but it's 100% really good quality cotton and it holds a crease really nicely when you're trying to sew with it. So here we've got some different samples that I've got and you'll like, get a lot of fabric out of a, out of a shirt. So just got some different ones here that I can just show you now. Um, I'll show you this one, there's a couple here as well. Um, so again, all of these have just come from shirts that my husband used to wear for work that he no longer needs or have worn out. You know, sometimes they get discoloured under the arms, don't they, sometimes? Um, cut that bit out, but you'll be surprised. I mean, this is this is a sleeve where I've cut out the placket. But look how much fabric's in there. I mean, I know it needs a good press, but that's that's lots of fabric um, to use. And actually this kind of scale is really nice on Luna as well. So those stripes would look quite nice. This one here I've got, and I pulled it out to show you, but see how different that stripe is on Luna now with the stripe. And also on a, on a bigger stripe like this, you might feel like you need to um, pattern match. So why give yourself the headache if you don't have to? Um, so that's what I would suggest with, with these. So, so have a look at, at what you can recycle. Have a look in your charity shop on the thing. You want 100% cotton because that really does hold a crease really nicely if you can do. But just look inside at the label and it'll tell you in there exactly what it's made of. For me, I'm going to be making this pink one, and I know that's, um, I know boys can wear pink too, girls can wear pink, everybody can wear pink, um, but 
I want this to go with the dungarees that I've made before, so um, we're going to go with this pink gingham. The only thing that, that's going to be a bit of a drawback for you guys is um, knowing the right side and the wrong side. So I'll try and be really clear when I'm making it to let you know which way round we're working with, but hopefully this will all make sense as we pull it together. Um, and I'll also show you a little tip as to how to remember which is your right side and which is your wrong side. So again, um, just some little tips that I can add to you that hopefully will make it a bit easier for you. Um, so the next step then is to trace off your pattern out of the book. Um, the pattern pieces will be in the back of the book. So use your tracing page, that's not the right pattern I know, but just a page to show you. So trace your patterns off with the markings and what have you. Um, the, if you look on the dungarees um, video that I've done previously, there's more on how to trace. You can use greaseproof paper or you can buy speciality um, tracing paper. Whatever you've got that works for you is great. So get your pattern traced off and then I'll talk to you about laying the fabric out because we're working with stripes. Um, so we want, oh, so I'm working with gingham, but you might be working with stripes and we just want to make sure that we get, get that all right. And, and just a little feature that we can just um, add in there that, that might give you a bit of a twist on, on, on the pattern. So um, I'll get my pattern together. I get my fabric ironed. Um, Pre-wash any fabric. If it's a ship, um, if it's a thrifted shirt it'll already been pre-washed that's fine just just press it so that it's nice and flat if it's a new shirt or new fabric I always recommend that you pre-wash your fabrics first because if there is going to be any shrinkage and that's already taken care of before you put all the trouble into making your garments so okay I'm finished with the waffling now um, I'll get on with it and we'll get going Okay, so here we have the pattern pieces and what I want to do is just point out a couple of features of these for you, just to orientate yourself because it is useful if you can just get used to looking at where you are um, on the patterns. Um, the first thing I'm going to point out to you is on the sleeve. Um, hopefully you can see this. Um, and what we can tell is that there's two notches on one side of the sleeve and there's one notch on the back. Now on dressmaking patterns, one notch indicates the front of a garment and then two notches indicates the back. So when we're looking at our pattern here now, if we look at the front of Alpha's shirt, there's one notch on this arm crease here, and that will tally up with that notch. And then on the back, there are two notches here, which will tally up with the back. So it is worth noticing that that's not, a, that's not an error. They are there deliberately, one for the front and two for the back. So just remember that all dressmaking patterns, children's, adults, everything, it's all, always the same with that. Um, the other thing that we've got here is we've got on this bottom here, we've got a dot and a, a cross. And what that means is that on, when we make this shirt in the fabric, we'll actually bring make a little pleat in the sleeve and one will indicate where the button goes and one will indicate where the buttonhole, if you were making one, goes. And um, that's up to you whether you make a buttonhole or not. Um, also on the back here, we've got this little symbol here, which is this um, double-ended arrow with the straight edge between. And that indicates that this part of the, port of the pattern here needs to be go against a fold in a fabric. But I'll go through that in a second. Um, and other than that, we've got again marks here again with the crosses and the lines. That's for button placement and for the um, buttonhole. Now you'll notice that I haven't traced out my um, the stashed line all the way around the edge, which is the sewing line. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of I work with that and just use quarter of an inch as we're going along anyway. So I don't I don't refer to that necessarily. However, I have put down the dashed line down the front of it because that's going to indicate with the notches top and bottom where we're going to actually fold that fabric there to make the front placket which is where the button the button or the button band where the buttons go down so that's that's where we are for now so once you've got your pattern piece and i've just rough cut mine out now and then i'll cut out on the lines when we're on the actual fabric is we're going to take our fabric here now now with this one oops wafting around use one of my lovely pattern weights that my friend Louise made for me and have those down right okay so when we're looking at our fabric we need to determine which is the right side and which is the wrong side sometimes it's easier than others if you've got a printed fabric it'll be really clear sometimes on the shirting it is difficult to tell but what I can see here which you won't be probably be able to pick up on the camera is that the pink here is uh, this um vertical lines is actually slightly darker than it is on the back so I feel the colours are more vibrant on the front so I'm going to use that as my right side and so so that I don't get any um, 
peculiarities in the colour or variances, I'm going to use that all the same all the same way. So I'm going to just fold. This is an old this is a sleeve. You can see this top of the sleeve cap and where I cut out the things. I've used it for something else as well. Um, but um, I mean th these shirts make great lining for 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 clothes as well for children so as i say they're really good now when we're folding our fabric here because we've got some lines going down and because we're working with stripes we need to make sure that even if it looks odd and puts our edges wrong we're folding down so just choose one of your lines and just make sure that you fold it neatly and straight all the way down that should line up your your pattern just smooth your fabric out okay so we can see here I've chosen that line there and I'm just going down through that and do the same on yours so that you've got chosen your 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 start point and you're going through if you're using a floral it doesn't matter so much um but this will just make sure that you're straight of grain um because we want to make sure that we're not on the bias I've spoken about the bias before um and that's kind of when you, when you have fabric on straight of grain it's really s stiff that way and also this way at right angles but when you go sideways because you're on a diagonal you get a stretch in a fabric and we don't want that stretch all the time when we're working. We do on some parts, but not always. Okay, so for now, we're gonna use this sleeve. So to get my pattern pieces, let's put the fold that way around because of the way that, no, that way around. Right. So now making best use of our fabric, I'm just going to place the patterns, the pattern pieces onto the fabric. Just get a feel for it, make sure we've got enough fabric. And I'm also making paying attention to how many I need to cut of each. So this one's cut one on the fold. This one here is cut two. Now, when it says cut two, you can't put your, you can't, if you had single fabric, you can't cut one that way and one that way. You need what's called mirrored pieces. So you need to have cut one that way, but then you'd have to turn your pattern over and cut one that way if you were cutting it out flat. Hope that makes sense. I've talked about mirroring uh, mirrored pieces um, in a different video, which hopefully will make sense because if you're making Luna out of a different fabric to felt, then you need to make sure you're using the same side each. So it was important for that as well. So let's see where we can put this. Let's put this up here, look. And again, we'll talk about how to make sure we're straight. On here, I'm going to use this dotted line here and line that up with one of the vertical dashes on my fabric because that will then make sure that that piece is then straight on that design. So that's going straight through the middle there. And the same with Alfie's shirt. What I'm going to do on here, if I fold it in half, that'll give me a, a crease line. And I can then pop that onto a. In fact, I might move that over there. Again, I'm trying. You, you make the best of your fabric if you can. Just try and get out of it as much as you can, because we can use this for all sorts of things, can't we? And it's very precious. Okay, so that's another piece there. What else have we got? We've got the yoke here. Now the yoke, I'm going to do something slightly different with this just to show you a slightly design feature. Absolutely, you can place it straight of grain like this and just the same way as we have done there. What I would do is fold it, matching up the edges together to give me a crease. And then I can match that crease line there along one of the stripes. And that would then give me um, a pattern piece that would match our... Um, the rest of our, our design whether it's stripes or not but actually I'm going to on this one I'm going to cut this one on the bias deliberately because I think the crisscross across the back of his um his fabric so if we were going on straight to grain we'd go this way or we'd go that way but by going on a um diagonal across here at 45 degrees we're actually going to pick up that different the, the check is going to be on its on its side, basically. So I think that's going to be a nice design feature. It's a nice design feature for men's shirts. And also, if you wanted to, you could also, on one of them, split this and cut two separately and then join them so you've got stripes going into the middle each way. So again, just little things you can do just to, just to play around with your fabric and, ha and have a bit of a go with what you're wanting to do. Um, so for this one, I am going to, when I can find where I can fit it properly, I'm going to put that on 45 degrees. And also, if you've got any quilting rulers, which I've got here, there's, some of them have got a 45 degree line on them anyway, if you can see that one just there. 
So again, if I line this up with my with my fabric down in here, say, I can I can line that up with a line and it'll give me a 45 degree angle against which I can place my pattern piece and that will then show me that that's definitely on the on the diagonal and going to be be matching up. So again, little things you can just do and just alter things to make it yours. What it, it, it amuses my little brain anyway to make sure that um, we've got to just make sure if you folded your fabric that you've got you can see that you've got both sides on the back so that's fine let's make sure this is just lined up straight so I want the 45 degree angle to be there and it's off slightly I guess this bottom edge needs to come down slightly So you get the gist anyway as to how you're going to place your fabric out. So place your fabric out, make sure you've got enough for everything that you need. The collar likewise, I'm just going to do straight. So you should have a back, a sleeve, a front, a yoke and a, the collar. So make sure you've got all your pieces. And then once you've got to that stage, pin them onto your fabric using your pins. Making sure that you're keeping everything nice and straight and level as, as you did it, as you laid it out. And then we'll cut out these pieces and have our pattern pieces ready to go. So that's what I will be doing next. And then I'll come back to you. So you get to the sta same stage as me and then we'll be all, all ready to go together, won't we? Just another little tip that I've thought about. If you've got your pencil to hand and you're working with quite a so strong stripe, you can always trace your stripe you can trace your stripe onto your pattern piece, not onto your fabric. So you'll be able to see through and then just copy the lines down and you'll make sure that you're on the same stripes when you then come to mirror the piece and then that'll keep your pattern going the, the same way when you're, when you're working across it. Um, yeah, so that's just a quick tip on, on how to do it. So don't be frightened about doing that. And also if you're trying to match a pattern match, you can trace part of the pattern on and then when you flip it over, you'll be able to see it through from the other side for doing your mirrored copies if you're cutting it out separately. So I just thought I'd show you what my pattern pieces look like pinned onto my fabric. You try to keep your pattern as flat as possible because if you get crinkles and what have you into your pattern piece, but just smooth your hand across. If you get a little crease in your pattern, you know that you've not pinned it flat enough. But if you move your hands across and, and those wrinkles are just just move out, it's just the, the paper against your, pat, uh, your fabric, then you'll know you'll be fine. So just do that quick check. Make sure you don't prick yourself on your pins. But again, just pin around the outsides so that you've got that all set. And I'm using, actually using on this shirt, I'm using less than one sleeve because we've still got this area here spare. So again, just try to use as much of that fabric as we can do. The other thing that I've done is I have made sure that my um, hemline on both my shirt front back and shirt front start and end on the same point on this check. Got a bit too high, sorry. So I've not, so again, I've chosen a, um, a pink vertical line, um, horizontal line, and I've made sure that both of my hem pieces are on the same. That should help with pattern matching down the side. Obviously, if you're not bothered about that, then it doesn't matter too much. Um, just go for it, but um, especially if it's a, a practice one, or if you're doing it in plain fabric, it won't matter. But if you're doing it with a stripe or with a strong um, design, then that's just one tip, just to try and make sure they end, start and end at the same place. Okay, so now on to cutting these pieces out and I'll be back with you. If you struggle to cut out your pattern pieces on the curves when it's flat on the, on the, on the table like that with these smaller pieces, what you can do is just cut off the excess of your rough cut. So I've cut these ones on the line, these sides, this is for the front. So I've done the down, the, um, down by the bush and placket in the bottom on the, on the um, table. But then hold it in your hand and then you can just get into those curves so much easier. I mean, you've got to be careful not to, to mess up your fabric and I wouldn't suggest this for dressmaking at all, but these pieces are so small and fiddly that um, sometimes you see like there, I've just come off the edge, look, just slightly. So make sure you just go back and just neaten that up because we want accuracy on here. That's gonna make all the difference to your makes. So no, no rushing to cut out to get onto the sewing because this is all about the preparation and it's really important. So that was much easier to cut like this than it was if I was down on, on, on my work surface. So again, for the yoke, let's rough, rough cut that out along the straight edges. And then we'll get 
it to a curve I'm just going to just rough, rough cut it out like this and then when it's in my hand I can then follow the lines much easier just watch don't cut your pins because it doesn't do anything for your blades okay and again here just move that because sometimes on these smaller things the pins are a little bit longer aren't they you just need to be careful if you if you're trying to cut through something and it won't go remember to have a check and just make sure that you're going through the right number of layers so again we can just um trim that should be okay trim this off okay so keep going with all of your pieces and you'll end up... Scraps, I tend to keep anything bigger than an inch square. I tend to keep because I think it could be useful for applique because I do do some quilt... Do do? I, I make quilts as well, so I do use scraps like that. But anything much smaller than that, and I do do then get rid of. You can use them for stuffing things. Um, so don't think that you don't have... Don't can't use them, but I, I try and keep what I can and reuse it. Okay, I'll just cut out the back and the sleeve and we'll be move on. So the next thing we need to do now is to just transfer these pattern markings onto our pattern and onto our fabric pieces before we remove the pattern pieces off. And so what I've got here is I've got a friction pen. Now these ones are heat erasable. They've got a little rubber tip and you can, in, on paper, you can rub with that and the heat generated by the rubber tip against the paper removes the ink. The problem with using one of these is that they will it will iron off. So if we wanted to press anything flat or we wanted to press a crease in anything, you could find later down the line that you've actually cre um, ironed out your marks and then you've got to go back to your pattern. And it's fine whilst it's like this, but if you've started to manipulate the fabric at all, it might not lie flat for you to be perfect. So in this case, I'm not going to use a Frixian pen. I'm actually going to use my snips. Now we're doing this, you've got to be really careful because what we want to do is we just want... We're, we're not going to take out the full um, triangle that's on the edge. We're just going to line the very nose of our snips a couple of threads in and we're just going to cut down the middle of that um, triangle. Now if I just remove this pin and show you on the fabric, it's very subtle but you can see that it's there hopefully. So let me just get one piece of fabric for you and then show you. Oh, fingers won't work today. So there, we've got a little snip just there. So as you're looking along the edge of that fabric, you can see that's very clear. So we're gonna do that. On our two snips, we're gonna snip down just a couple of threads down the middle of each one. Now, because we're working with such small seam allowances, they can't be very, you can't go snipping right into the middle of your fabric. So that's why we just use the nose of the snips or your scissors so that you only snip what you want. You don't get nudged and then I'll get a bit enthusiastic and, and snip straight into your pa fabric piece. So again here, I'm just going to just do a little snip into the middle of those two. And you'll be surprised how clear that mark is when you actually come to sew with it. So regardless of how big your triangle is for going down into the middle of your um into your pattern markings just do a few threads that's literally honestly all you need um, and on the sleeve one as well we just need one here as well so I'm not going all the way down to the end of the triangle so I've done the sleeve let's do this back piece here because if you go too far that's probably what I should tell you is the consequence of going too far if you go too far then you will um, your snip will be visible outside of your seam allowance on your finished garment and we don't actually want that so again snip there and a snip on the yoke okay so the next thing i want to talk to you about now is how we mark the right side of our fabrics to make sure that we get it um, the right way round. because the, one of the problems can be is especially if fabric is the same front and back if i undo this one on the back because this is the this is going to be the first, one of the first things that we deal with it pins out. Is that we folded it with our? Let me just double check. Yeah. So we folded it right sides out. It doesn't matter which way you which way you folded it, as long as we remember the consistency. So my right side is in the top. So when I open this up, this side here is my right side. Now the trouble is that. If I were to have another piece and it was exactly the same and I put on the other side, how would I know which one was the right side and which was the wrong side? And the way that I do that, quick and easy way, is just put a pin in. So I just, on all of my pattern pieces, put a pin in 
so that you can just then say, okay, the pin is on the right side. So we've done that with this one, so on here. So when we've got something small like Alfie's collar, we have to be careful when we undo this because we know that the right side of the fabric is on the outside. So I'm going to take one, the top one on, off, and place it on my work surface. And then I'm then going to turn the other one over and put that on my work surface too. So we've got both right sides up. And then what we're going to do with these is we're going to do a tailor's tack. So let me just get a needle and thread and then we can then mark these up as being the right way round. Okay, so I've got a dark green thread here loaded up. So any contrast colour is fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my pattern piece anywhere along it, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to take a stitch through. I've not got any knot at the end of my fabric of my thread. So I'm going to pull that through and just leave a tail like this. And then I'm going to go again and just do another stitch. Now you can put them at right angles because that's what we do with Taylor's tacks. And then the center marks the dot or whatever we're, make, we're marking. So we used to just for transferring pattern pieces, um, pattern markings onto fabric from pattern pieces. So again, that's what we've done. So now I'm just going to snip off leaving a tail and then snip through the loop. And now the fluffy bits are on the outside of my right side of my fabric. So again, let's do that on the collar again here. So again, I know my right side is facing up. So I take a, a stitch, doesn't matter what size it is, whatever suits you, leave a tail, and then we're going to go at right angles again to that first stitch and pull it through and leave a loop. Cut off the thread and needle and through the loop. And that is then your, so the, the um, you get this cross on the other side, but this is the actual tailor's tack as such. So whichever one you want, whether you want to, on the bigger pieces, you might want to use a pin. Um, on the smaller pieces, you want might want to do a tailor's tack. Whatever you, works for you, just go through and just mark that. The other thing that you tailor's tacks will be good for is for marking the um, button and buttonhole placements. So again, we can go through the pattern piece as well this time. Oops, pull my thread too far. And we're going through both, both pattern pieces and the paper pattern. And then just mark that at a right angle. And pull it through. Snip through the thread. And through the loop. And then you've got a marking for your pattern placement. Again, you can use the friction pen and just fold your pattern back and just mark it. But as soon as you iron this, and we're going to be ironing this down flat, you're going to lose your marking. So actually, I know it takes a few more minutes doesn't take that long really to be fair um but just mark your different markings pattern pattern markings onto your pattern pieces and i'll show you how we split this oh, i'll show you now actually i haven't finished but i'll do that in a minute. so once you're ready to take your pins out take your pins out i will probably still mark this one with a pin to say which is the right sides again ease your pattern piece away from your fabric so just peel that off, hold on to your threads if you need to, if they're a little bit loose. So now we can see that those marks are staying on the pattern piece. And then what you do is you just pull your two pieces of fabric apart so that it exposes the threads. And then you snip through the center of those threads. And then when you've got left and right, you've got a mark on both sides of your fabric. So let's do that again. So I'm just gently easing those bits along. Don't go too far, otherwise you'll pull your threads through. And then just snip through the middle. And then that will just mark your um, popper or your button placements for you later on. So I'm going to carry on doing those. Um, so yeah, um, you can do these ones as well if you want to. I'm probably just going to guesstimate those. I've, I've put a little snip in for the... Um, for the triangles so I'll just I'll just guesstimate that I won't worry too much about that and I think on mine I actually I didn't put a popper on it I think I just put a button and, and sew through all edges so um I'll do that as well and um, when we get to that but we'll cross that bit with when we come to it so I'll just finish off marking these last two and then we'll be on to getting our layout sorted so let's just, before we move on, let's just do a quick pattern piece check and make sure that we've got everything that we need. So we've got our back here with our right side up and marked. We've got our two front pieces and here you can really see the importance of mirroring those pieces. I've got both top sides up, so you can see we've got a left and a right. If I'd got it wrong, we'd have two lefts like that or two rights. And that's where we know then that we've got it wrong because we actually need one of each in order for them to meet down the middle. 
so just be aware of that. It's really noticeable on a pattern that isn't symmetrical, but if you've got a pattern like this one here, which is the colour, then these ones here are, um, are more difficult to differentiate um, whether you've got a left and a right or the right side up or not. So that's why we've got our tailor tack on this smaller piece, just to, just to mark that. We've then got the two sleeves, and again, we're going to have one with the right side with a two notches on our little fabric there, if you can see. And then again, if we look at the same side on our other piece, we've only got one notch. So we know we've got a left and a right for our sleeve as well. And then we've got the two yoke pieces. And now you can see, hopefully, how this is going to look against the shirt now with the, with the diagonal pattern against the straight pattern. So when that's joined together to make the yoke, it'll hopefully make quite a nice feature. Let's keep our fingers crossed. This is the theory. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to have a look and we're going to take our back piece and our yoke pieces and we're going to start and join things together. So join me in a second and we'll get on with doing that. So I've just been having a look at the book because so I'll follow the directions that are in the book as well. I might do it in a slightly different order to the way that they've done it, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll be a good girl and follow the book today, um, especially for you guys if you're trying to follow that and, and make sure that's right. Um, and what um, they talk about in the in the book here is that when you've got your um, front pattern piece, there was a little mark here and it had the word snip next to it. So what I'm going to do now is now I've got my pattern pieces here. I hadn't snipped it before because I thought it was going to be part of the process. I've snipped my two um, triangles, but I hadn't snipped that one. And actually what Sarah wants you to do is just to snip down into that because that's going to be a fold by a quarter of an inch. OK, so that's quite a big little, quite a big little snip, quite a big snip there. So you're going to do that on that side. And then because we've got a mirror copy, we're going to turn our pattern piece over when we attach it onto the other one, onto the other piece. And we're going to mirror that snip again on that side there. OK, so we've got that like that. So the next stage then that we're going to do now is we are going to press this little um, fold down like that. OK, and press it with our iron and then we're going to fold into the first snip that we made. And if you've got a stripe, you'll be able to follow it exactly down. So make sure it is straight. So we're going to fold that in and then that's going to fold back over again. But this bit here will then be folded down. So what it's doing is it's neatening up that button edge. That's what it's trying to do for you, is trying to give you that neat edge to the placket because the collar will then attach onto this bit that's left. But for now, we need to just create this button placket. So let's just go through that again. So we've used our pattern piece. We've snipped through the snip mark, which is separate to those two triangles that we snipped before. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold the first one across and we're going to press. So fold it across that first mark and press. And then we're going to fold the edge down in so that it's all going to be enclosed. So then that'll to that snip mark down. And then we're going to fold it over on itself again and it'll make a nice neat placket for our Alfie shirt. Let me do it and I'll come back to you and hopefully this will make sense because it's an extra step that might not seem important but i think it's going to help that collar attach nicely at the end okay i've thought of a okay i've thought of a way that's going to make this slightly easier first of all make make your snip down as we've, we've said before then i want you to turn in and press the first it's only very small isn't it two eighths of an inch isn't it almost to the first little notch that you've got on your pattern piece it's to that one there so we're just folding that edge in just to hide that raw edge when we make our shirt then what I want you to do, so go and press that, is then on this one, I want you to fold it back on itself so that this first notch meets that snip mark because we're going to put just a few stitches across there which will just hold it still for us and then we'll turn it out and then we'll fold it down and I think that will make everything stay in place easier for you. So let's just show you again on, the, on here. So I've folded across here this first edge and that's folded in towards the wrong side. What I'm then going to do is on this new folded edge that I've just made, where the snip is in the top, we're going to fold that back on itself, so it's on the right side of the fabric, to just to that little snip mark there. And then, if I use this all to show you, oops, sorry for the noise, I'm just going to do a few stitches across here, because then that's going to hold that in place when I turn that out the other way, 
so it gives us a nice edge when we go down. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll get my machine set up. First little bit of stitching, folks, already. Well, probably an hour in already with all my waffling. And we're just going to start stitching. So let me just see if that can make sense. And then we'll, we'll take it from there for you. And I'll show you why that, I think that's better. So once we've turned this through the other side on the corner here, we've got a nice neat edge then. It's not trying to move when we're trying to work with it. So all I'll do now is press that down again, so just that flattens it. We've got a little bit of a raw edge here, but we're gonna deal with that when we talk about doing the neck edge. So don't worry about that at the moment. And then we can see here, if we turn to the inside of what will be the inside of the garment, we've got our raw edge turned under. And then when we sew this down, because the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to do two rows of top stitching, one here and one here, but from the other side. So we need to work out where this line is here, and I'm going to just sew just to the um, right of this pink line here, and that's going to be my marker, if you like, and do that all the way down. And then I'm just going to sew just um, on, off the edge, not off the edge, just about an eighth of an inch in, so probably the edge of that pink line there to go down so stripes can be helpful to keep you straight take your time if you've got a speed control on your machine turn it right down top stitching is always done really slowly in order to get the best response um, and guess res best response best result um, and that's what we'll do so now that we've got this down I'm just going to give it a quick press again just to make sure everything holds down if you want to you can put some pins in I'd go that way if I were you at right angles to where you're going to be sewing so you can get quite close up before you take your pin out. And that will then just make sure. So we just want to make sure that when we're doing both lines of our top stitching, that we are going through this little edge here that's just folded under because we want that to be kept down. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments if it doesn't. And that's fine and I'll try and explain it a different way if I need to for anybody who hasn't quite got it but that should hopefully help okay let me do my top stitch in and then we'll have a look at it next so I've just stitched this down here I've got one row there and one row there hopefully you can see that on on the camera that one row there one row there and that's just from the placket on the back this little bit has come out a little bit for me I'm not going to worry too much about that obviously you if you're not happy you can unpick and do it again um, but for me, as long as the top looks okay in terms of this shirt, then I'm quite happy. But that bit there stayed perfectly in place for me with adding those little stitches. So that's definitely something I would recommend. So let's start and work on the other side, shall we? So when we're doing um, two pieces like this, these are the two fronts for the shirt. We always have to make sure we're working with mirrored copies. So you want one left and, and one right. Just make sure that you're not folding this one the same way that you folded that one because if you do that you'll end up with two the same side and you won't have your mirror copy because you want one to go one way and one to go the other so here we're going to again go to this first notch first and we're going to fold in that small edge and press it then when that's pressed we're then going to fold it back towards the right side to meet the snip that we did the big snip and we're going to just hold that still and then we're just going to sew from the edge of the snip across to the edge of the work turn it out and then press it so that's what we're going to do if you've already got this bit fast forward it i'm just trying to reiterate and give a refresher to those people who who perhaps take a little bit longer to grasp things and it doesn't matter some things you'll grasp easily some things you won't um but it's just i'm just sort of chain adding a step in which i think is making a, a difference hopefully you'll agree so on this one i'm just going to fold that one through to the back and then take it through. Okay, so there's my little stitches holding that flap down. 
So now we're going to just take off this corner here to reduce the bulk in the corner. And then we're just going to fold that through to the right side. And just use a pin. Oh, I've got this little oil that I can just use just to poke. Don't be too enthusiastic, you will poke a hole in your fabric. And there we've got a perfect point there for holding that together. That sits nice and flat too. So now what we're going to do now is going to press this down in line with the um, last notch that we made to make that nice and flat. And then we'll go to the right side and we'll top stitch here and here. Oh, that's gone down slightly. Make sure you've got it absolutely where you want it to be so it's nice and flat. Okay. So now we have our left and our right shirt front and because we know now which side we're working on we can take those pins out that were marking the right side for us. Don't need those anymore. And we've got our two front shirt bits done. So let's move on to the next section. Let's see what else Sarah tells us to do next. So now we're going to work on the back of the shirt. So let's just pop these pieces out of the way for the time being so we don't lose anything. Make sure the dog doesn't eat anything. And working with the um, back of the shirt, we've got the central little notch here, and then we've got our two little bits on the side. And those two little bits on the side are pulled into the center part to make a little pleat like this. Now, which way does she have the pleat going? Oh, she wants on the outside, okay. So we know this is our right side, so we're gonna push that, that pleated fabric to the back. So you get a little pleat. So all I'm doing is I've identified, I'm going to use this, this might help. Oops, on here. So there I've got my two little marks, which I'm, I know uh, I'm not perfect because I've got my little snips in the top here anyway. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to fold that through to the centre. So that's my fold line and then fold it through to the back there. And you can just put a little pin in, if you'd like, just to hold it steady while you're working with it. And again, because we're going to know what the front is, we can use this pin here to take this out. And then again, we're just going to fold that pleat there till it touches the other one. And this is going to give us our, make sure we don't overlap like mine just were. So this is what we're going to do. So we're just forming this pleat that you see down the back of men's shirt sometimes. And that's what it looks like from the front. So we've got the folded edges in inside and that's in line with the little notches on the edges. And then, so you've got this box pleat. That's what we've created a box pleat on the outside. And what Sarah suggests you do now, what I'm gonna suggest you do is just do it. Yes, she does a couple of stitches just to hold that in place. So if you do it just quite high up, because you just want to hold it in place, then that would be good. But I'm also gonna do another row of stitches just down here as well, because that'll hold that box pleat straight for when we're actually sewing our yoke on. So, it, so it's just like, if you like, belt and braces. So again, let me just do a couple of stitches, put your needle down into your work. A few stitches. Take, now that the presser foot's holding it, I can take that pin out. As you get close, don't sew over your pins. It's not good practice to sew over your pins needle out and I'll show you the first line first. So we've got a little row of stitches just across here now and now what I'm going to do is hold in those pleats in straight. We can follow the lines of our um, stripes down can't we? Just down here I'm just going to increase my um, stitch length take it easier to get out to four it's just a tapping stitch. You can do that by hand if you want to. I'm just going to take those that out and it'll just hold it still for you. For what it's a good good idea with any pleats, if ever you're making anything with pleats, is just so you can see how that's just staying absolutely perfectly straight. Um, and then after we've sewn the yoke on, we're going to take these stitches out and it'll be absolutely straight. So then let's get on to the yoke bit then, shall we now? So let's get our two bits of yoke. Let's do it this way first. You'll be able to see it better against the dark green of my cutting mat, won't you? It comes out of the way. Tidy up, Claire. Right, let's find the other piece of yoke. Here we go. So we've got our two pieces of yoke here, both with right sides up. Now, what we want to do is we want to sandwich a piece of yoke. Oh, wrong side, Claire. Piece of yoke on the front and the back of here. So the first one we're gonna do now is we're gonna take one piece of yoke 
and we're going to put it right side against right side with the long edges together. So let's take that pin out now because we know we're on the right side and we're going to match up the centre notch with the centre notch in the middle of the back of the shirt and put a pin in it. Okay, and then we're then going to go to the edges here and line that up. You might find it slightly proud, but that's just because it's taken account of the seam allowance, so don't worry about it. Okay. Well, it might be slightly inaccurate cutting, it can, can happen, so but just do those edges together to make sure. Just make sure it's not shorter than, than the back piece, because if it is, you'll have a problem. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the right side of the other yoke piece and put that face down. So I'm just turned it upside down and now I've got the right side facing up and then I'm going to lay my shirt and take the pin out now, I know that's the right side facing up. Take my, my shirt and put it on the back here. So now I've got the right side facing the wrong side. I know it's going to be complicated, but when we fold it out, we want the right sides out. Let me go through that again. So we've already pinned on the right side to the right side of the first yoke piece. We've put the right side up but upside down on our work surface and now we're just going to place this over the top. We're going to match our centre notch and pin around that centre slightly and put that pin through all three pieces of fabric. And then we're going to match up this edge here and we're going to do the same and then this edge up here so you've got three layers of fabric we're going to be sewing through just make sure all your you can see all your raw edges together and they're all lining up perfectly so that's what we're going to make go through this shirting's quite thick for pins actually i should use my other pins right okay and now we're going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance across here Okay, so let's do that next. So I'm just going to take my stitch down again because I'd increased it for doing my um, for doing the other, for doing the tacking stitches. So let's just do a couple of stitches. Put our needle down into our work to anchor it because now we can we can move it if we need to. Take this first pin out because now that works anchored. And then I'm following this edge on my presser foot for my seam allowance. So just keep going along. When you get close, stop, your needle's in your work. That means that when you pull your pin out from underneath your presser foot, you're not going to dislodge your work. It's not going to, you're not going to get a jolt in, you, in your stitching. Can't see so. Okay, that's better, isn't it? Right, so let's sew it down here again. Again, close to the pin, take our pin out. And then we're going to reverse at the start and stop. Needle up and snip our threads. Okay, so what we've got now is if you look, we've got two, two yoke pieces and the back sandwiched in between. That's how this looks. So when you fold it up as well, you've got a right side facing out and a right side facing out, that's what we want. So now what we're gonna do is just gonna press this, so press it flat like that first, and then each piece in turn, press the seam allowance up into the up towards the neck of the yoke, this is where the neck's gonna go for our um, lunar character. And then we're going to then, when we've done that one, we're going to then fold the other one up. Make sure that they're absolutely up, and that they, they match each other's seam allowances, you need those seam allowances, and what have you, just give it a little pull if you need to hold on to it. And just give it a little pull and that will just make sure that's all straight and here you can see the diagonal that i did on the back of the shirt as well look how that looks so let me just go and press this and i'll be back to you so once it's all pressed this is what we've got we've got our box pleat here and we can see that that's not gone skew if because we had our tacking threads in and on the inside as well we can see that there's the the gap where the pleat was and these bits here just all match up. So now what she wants you to do is she wants you to now top stitch cl close to the edge. So you're going to top stitch along here now just to hold all of this together. So that seam allowance is pointing up, look, in the middle of those two yoke pieces. And we're just going to top stitch that down. So I changed my stitch to number two to move my needle across to make it nice and neat. Top stitching, so keep your speed down. And 
get this as, as straight as you can do. I haven't start, started and stopped or reverse sewn at the start and beginning because it, we're going to sew our sleeves on later and that will then take care of that. And now because we've finished with these tacking threads we can just take these out because our box pleat is all now all perfectly lined up and held straight. And once you, if you put a little bit of water on that, a little bit of ironing, it'll lose those prick, prick marks, okay? So now I'm gonna do something slightly different than Sarah does for this next section. We're gonna do the burrito method of attaching the fronts. So I want you to identify which is your, um, and you might've heard of the burrito method, you might not. The way Sarah was suge is suggesting to do it in the book is that you take your pattern piece just lie it down so that it's right sides together. Let me just put this moving machine. Oops. So let's have the right side facing up of our shirt. And again, it's just important to orientate ourselves because it can get confusing. We know the right side of our shirt is this one. So let's just put it on top of here just for now so we can just line up those shoulders to make sure we understand which bit is going why. This also does make sure we've got the left and the right fronts. So once we've got this here, we've got the box pleat pointing upwards, as you can see, and we've got our yoke that we've top stitched. So what we're going to do now is let's just work with one at a time. Let's take this first one and I'm just going to fold it back on itself. That makes you, sh that confirms to you which way round this should be. And what I want you to do is then just put a couple of pins in the top just here of your yoke. So we're just attaching at the shoulder, the front to the front of the yoke. Make sure those line up properly. Oh, got threads, don't want threads. Right. Now, this is gonna be the bit. Now, you could just sew along there, fold it backwards, press, and then you could then fold this edge in and top stitch it. But the way that you do it on adult shirts is you use something called the burrito method. And what you do is you fold up, you roll up the back of the shirt really tightly so as tight as you can make it into a real real roll right up onto the yoke then what I want you to do is reach behind and the other side of the yoke that you've not pinned pull that round you're gonna have to sew, um, fold up your front as well I'll make sure we've got enough room to be able to do this otherwise I'll be criticizing myself for telling you wrong okay and then what we're going to do so you can see these two are rolled in and then what you have to do is you then match up that raw edge with that raw edge because that's the yoke and making sure that you're keeping the rest of the the shirt out of the way just put your pin back in again to hold that together and when you unroll this what it does is it means that you're You've got no raw edges at all and you don't have to do any hand sewing. Now, there's nothing against hand sewing. I like hand sewing in actual fact. But when you're doing this on an adult shirt, this is it's, it's, it's worthwhile knowing how to do this. So we've got our rolls of fabric, our back and our front is rolled up. And now what I'm going to do is just going to sew across here at the same seam allowance I used before. Okay. So a couple of stitches and back. Needling my work. Take my pin out. Now we've anchored it, a few stitches forward, take the pin out, and then stitches just to hold that in place, because we are going to pull this through. So let's take our threads off. I know it looks really weird to do it like this, and I'll show you how to do the one in a minute, but that's what we, that's what we do. What we can then do is if we just, from the neck edge, just pull this in, both that side in the rolls, both of them, it turns the yoke back out on itself. As you can see there, so that now we've got that seam all fully enclosed. Okay, so we can press that and then top stitch it. So we just give it a little press and then I'll come back, I'll show you what it looks like then once it's, um, as we move it on. So the first thing that we're going to do now is take our other front piece so that we can make sure we get it on the right way round. And we've got the right side up, right side up, and the right side up. And we can then see that this piece here 
fits onto the shoulder just there like that. So we're going to fold this one back here and then what I suggest you do is pin it from the back because I didn't on the first one and the pins got in the way. So just line that edge up. So pin it from the inside of the yoke side. Okay, like that. And just lay it back out again. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to fold up the back, roll up the back as tightly as we can again, remember, nice and tight. We don't want it to get in the way of what we're sewing. And we're also going to fold our front up as well. Oops, fingers. So those two rolls touch together. That's the best way I can describe it. And as tight as you can. And as neat as you can. Okay, put those two rolls together. Then reach round and get the other side of your yoke here. Pull it to the front. And then you're going to match that top up against those pins as well. So then we can take the pins out and make sure those raw edges match. That one's dropped down slightly. That's it. Making sure to keep your rolls out of the way. I say this is called the burrito method of enclosing seams. So it's a useful one to see. It's difficult to explain um, if you're just trying to tell people just without any pictures. But when you actually see it, it all makes sense. And laying it out on your chop um, cutting board first, just make sure that you've actually got the right pieces together. So there we go again. Oops, pin won't go in. Okay, so we've got our two rolls here. One is the back and one is the front. And I've kept those right out of the way of my stitching. And I've then pinned the front and the back and the, and the yoke. You can see that's the yoke seam. That's actually going and, and, and going round so the yoke seam is out. So then once we've got that, we're then going to make sure everything stays lined up. Okay. And we're just going to sew a quarter of an inch across that seam line. Pin out, want some needle in the work. Second pin out. And then reverse stitch, where has it gone? And then look at our threads. So if I just show you now before I pull it all apart. So there's our rolls and all of that fabric is kept separate and at the edge here, we've just got one yoke piece, the front section, and then the other yoke piece. And then what we can do is then pull these out. It doesn't matter which way, as long as you pull them out. And pull the back out. And then what happens is that when you lay that flat, you have this, the yoke seam, the two, the, the raw edges of all three pieces are actually inside the centre there. So it just gives you a nice clean edge front and back. So just go back and press this now so that you've got them all nice and pressed. And then we're going to do the same top edge, top stitching on both of these bits on the yoke side. So your top stitching is always on your yoke side of your shirt, okay? And then if we just place this down on our cut chopper, keep calling it a chopping board, our cutting board, then you can actually, a cutting mat, you can see then that we've got neatly edged um, top stitch, we've got our lovely pleat, the front plackets that's going to go down here where our buttons and buttonholes are in actual fact. I use poppers, not poppers, I use, you could use poppers, I use um, press studs to hold that down and there we go. So that's where we are to at the moment. The next st thing that Sarah will have you do after that is... She wants you to sew the sleeve hem. So let's just get our sleeves together. Let's put that to one side. It's coming together nicely. Here's one sleeve, here's our other one. Okay. Now, on a normal garment, I wouldn't necessarily, I'd say to press the sleeve hems at this stage, but I wouldn't say to sew them because I think you'll get a nicer finish if you once you've sewn this inside seam here. The problem is that this is so fiddly to try and do 
Um, I might try and do one one way and one the other way, but um, it's so fiddly, you're going to have to get your machine right in there. And, and so it might be possible. Um, and then we do do, we do the, we do do again. We do make the pleat after we finish the hem anyway. So maybe that does give us some room. I'm going to try it my neat way and see how it goes. So what I want you to do at this moment in time, she wants you to turn up half a centimetre and then another half a centimetre which is just quarter of an inch. And what we're going to do is turn this, do a double hem. So turn it over, press and turn it over and press. So we've got a narrow hem on the bottom of our shirt sleeves. So if you want to do it the same way Sarah's doing in the book, now you've got this folded here and pressed, just go pop that down, put a pin in it if you need to just to hold it in place and then just top stitch that from the start to the end on your machine and do you can do that on both ones if you want to try my fiddly way and i might come back later and say don't do it my way do it sarah's way but i'm going to try and we'll see and you'll understand what i'm saying then but if it's for mine just um fold it for now because we want the crease marks but we don't want to sew it down okay so the next thing that we're going to do then is take the body of our shirt and again remember on the front we've got one notch as we said and on the back we've got two and what we're going to do now is by putting our shirt right side up, I keep getting threads, um, right side up, so we know I've got our pin, so we know we're right sides up. We're making sure that we've got one notch to the front and two notches to the back. If you try and offer it up and you've got one, one notch on your front and two notches on your sleeve piece, you know that's the sleeve for the other side. So that's going to twist around and come on to the other side. So it will fit. Um, and we know now that we've pressed um, our hem up and maybe you've stitched it. So again, we can take this pin out because we know what is the right side and the wrong side. So what I would do now is put the snips together, the snip marks together and put a pin in. And then go to the back and match up your two snips for your, the back of your shirt and put those two together and put a pin in. Then let's match the underarm seams. This is the edge of the, of the sleeves. Let's match that and put a pin in there. And then let's go to the side. So again, we're just trying to get our orientation right and just match everything together. And you can see those edges go together nicely. It's a sign of good drafting, that is, when it all goes. Now, we've got these two edges here. So one curve is going one way and one curve's going the other. So what we're going to do now, and we need to be careful not to stretch this because this can be a, um, a bias edge because where we've cut through here. We're just going to ease those in together to make sure that the raw edges are together. So just manipulate the fabric with your fingers without stretching it just to put those together and when you get to a good place and you feel like you've got your edges lined up nicely just pop a pin in and again here and i'm going to put one final pin in now when you look at the other side it might not look as if it's going to sit flat but you've got to remember we're going to be moving it pulling it out on itself and so, so long as when it goes under the needle, it's flat, it'll be fine. You want no, no puckers and no um, creases or pleats in any of this sleeve. That's got to be absolutely flat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew it from this side because we can control, because this has got the extra width and we can then control it and see whether it's going to go right or not. So that's going to sit flat against your sewing machine bed. Let's put pins in the wrong way around, haven't I? Let's, let's pin it the other way around. Let's make things easy for ourselves, shall we? Rather than difficult, as I tend to try and do. But if you just hold it still with your fingers, where your pin's going to come out, you should then find your pin goes in quite nicely again, where it was anyway. So here is a perfect case in point. Look, we've got a pleat here, but we're gonna to have to manipulate that fabric as we sew along. We can move the pleat down and we can get a flat bit at about a quarter of an inch, so we know we're not going to be we're not going to have a problem. Because we want those two these two sides to come together really beautifully now without any creases or pleats. Okay, so just to confirm, I've got my pins on the body side of the fabric because then my sleeve 
can lie flat against the bed. Now, sometimes this is the opposite way around when you do dressmaking, but these are so small and fiddly, we have to just um, just not follow quite all of the, the um, dressmaking police rules all the time. So again, I'm going to start here, quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I'm going to take my time, put my needle in my work so it anchors it down, and then making sure all the time that I make sure these raw edges match because that's where it needs to in order for it to, to fit properly. Let's have a go, folks. Let's see how we get on. So let's take that right back onto the centre line. Okay. And I'm going to start stitching. Just start and stop because it might get pulled out. Needle in the work and take out the pins as we go. That's my pin cushion. And we know that we want this sleeve to be flat against the bed. So use your fingers and just feel for any creases underneath there because we want that, to, we don't want those to get in the way. Turn your speed down as well. Not a time for zooming, this isn't. And just make sure that the few stitches in front of your presser foot are straight, okay? If you need to, you can lift up your presser foot and just manipulate your fabric round and you'll be surprised how much difference that can make. Also, if you're having problems with your fingers getting in underneath, you can use something called an awl, which is one of these. You get these off Amazon um, or other sewing shops um, and this is really good. So it's a metal point, so don't get it underneath your needle because it will break your needle. But you can use this to just manipulate your fabric without having to have your fingers in the way. So if I just get this where I want it to be, get it lined up, okay, making sure that's all straight, you can then put your work down, your thing down. And if I use my awl, I can anchor down that side of the piece of fabric to make sure that it's all straight. Let's take this pin out here. So look how slow I'm going and I've done this a few times and I've done it on dressmaking and whatever. So don't don't think you need to be zooming because you don't. A few stitches, lift the presser foot up, just make sure that everything is just sitting nicely. Manipulate your fabric if you need to to get it. You only need two or three stitches in front and you'll gradually move forward with it. Hopefully this is helpful to see me sewing this in real time. Let's just hope when we get to the other side I haven't got any puckers in it. <laughs> Otherwise I'm going to be embarrassed if I'm trying to show you how to do it. But then it just shows that we're all not perfect all the time, doesn't it? So again, let's make sure that fabric is straight and is as close to the edge as we can. Raw edges need to match, so we can always just pull on the underneath of the sleeve just to make sure that that's straight. And if I do get any puckers, at least I can show you what to do if you do then, can't I? If you get the same when you're doing yours. Just so follow the curve. A few stitches to start and stop again. Needle up and let's have a little look. I might have one little pucker or it might have just escaped. Okay. So... Actually, when we iron that and press that, we've not got any puckers. It looks like there's puckers there, but actually there isn't anything on the stitching line. So we did good, folks. We did well. So now let me just press this and then I can show you. And I'm going to press it so that the seam allowance goes into the, towards the sleeve. Okay, so that's our sleeve in now. So we can see there's no actual pucker on the, on the actual stitching line. Had I have got a pucker... All you need to do is just identify where it is on your thing. Take out a couple of stitches either side of it over where the, the pucker is. Undo your stitches and then smooth it out with your fingers. Look at it to lay flat 
and then just start a couple of stitches in over your other existing stitches, go down and finish a couple over the other. And that sh nine times out of 10, that will work. If it doesn't, you might have to take your sleeve out and, and recite it again. It just means that it's not quite sat as flat as it should do. So let's have a go at putting an, the pin in the other sleeve in again and just see how we get on. So we've got our sleeve right side up, our shirt's right side up because we know our pleat is at the box pleat. We're matching up the two notches with the two notches and we're matching up the single notch with the single notch. And because we know we're at the right way around, we can take our pins out. So let's do those first. Let's mark our reference points. So notch goes to notch and pinned in. We can put this end on here now because we can while we're here. And that's all sitting nice and flat. Let's go to the other side now and let's match our other notches up. And this makes sure then that we've got the right sleeve. You'll be surprised how many sewists um, do actually say on their own garments, well, yeah, I ended up putting a sleeve in the wrong way round. But if you, if you pay attention to your notches and the designer has, has marked those for you, then that's your, that's your safety net to make sure you've got the right one. And remember, two, two notches always at the, at the back and one notch at the front and three notches on a centre back, actually. Okay, so we're just now just easing these edges together with our fingers. Make sure that we've got the raw edges uh, all level and equal, because that's going to give us the very best result. Oh, I'm pinning from the wrong side again, folks, aren't I? Honestly, that's pinned from the shirt side, not the sleeve side. As I say, just pin your fabric together where you're taking your pin out. That'll hold it to f still for you. And then you can just go ahead and put your pin in. If your pin doesn't go through straight away, just give it a twist. Just to spin it in your fingers on the end and that will help it go through, the find its way through the fibres. Okay, I'm getting there. Little twist because that one doesn't want to go through. It. And then we've just got this little bit on the on the on the where the biggest curve is. So just try and find your way to the centre so that it sits nicely. So you've got equal amount of fabric either side, and then put your pin through. Okay. So again, we've got a nice flat sleeve, no puckers in there, nothing nothing um, pinned into that. That's going to make that flat wrong. And we're going to sew with that flat onto our bed because we want to be able to control the, the puckers here. And I found that it does, especially on these smaller garments, gives you the best chance of success then. And we'll just work our way through. So again, let's have a go. If you've already got this and, you're, and you, you know what you're doing, just go on to the next stage, just fast forward. I won't be offended, I promise. Okay, so here we've got our shirt. We've got our sleeve flat down to the sleeve bed, um, to the, um, to our, bed of our sewing machine. I'm just going to start a couple of stitches in, a couple of stitches back and then I'm going to put my needle down into the work. Hand crank it if you haven't got a needle up down button. Take your pin out so we don't sew over our pins and making sure that we're flat for the next few stitches till we get to the next pin. A couple more. Okay and take our pin out. So you try and take the pins out at the last minute, but you don't want to get it so last minute that you don't think. Just make sure you're flat underneath. So just lift your, your, your fabric up and just make sure. And if you need to, just use your awl to keep your edges together and just keep things nice and flat. So we're just following that curved edge and I'm matching mine up with the edge of my, on my presser foot here. So we're coming to the tight curve bit here. So just, let's just do a couple of stitches because we know that's going to sit nicely because the other one has done, so this one should do too. Just lift your presser foot. It just releases the stress on the fabric and just enables it just to push, just to flatten out for you. Follow the curve round. Where's that other pin gone? I know it's there somewhere. There it is. So again, needle up and it just helps that fabric just sit nice and flat. 
because we've got our needle in our work, it does mean that we can then just play around to make sure that things are going to line up. Pull on the sleeve slightly if you need to, just to get it right. but I prefer taking my time the first time than I do to unpicking. So again, that's where taking your time pays off. And now we're on to a gentle curve. So this will just follow through now. Hold our fabric together, make sure it's right, okay. A couple of stitches just to hold that in place, right. Keep your fingers crossed, folks. Oh, now I've got a pucker. Right, okay. So let's. So I can see already that they've got a crease there that's been caught by the by the stitches. Hopefully you can see that too. And when we pull it open, you can see that it's just gone that little like tack in there. So get your grab your quick unpick. Nobody's nobody's too clever to not use a quick unpick. And first of all, wherever your crease is. We're going to take that fur that stitch out first, okay? And then we're just going to take out two stitches to one side and two stitches to the other. Okay, that then releases the fabric. And if you just use your fingers, you should be able to put that fabric into a place where you can smooth it and there shouldn't be a pucker. Okay. Then you're going to start your stitches, just a couple of stitches ahead of where you've unpicked. And then you're going to sew to a couple of stitches after, but that then should smooth that out for you. And if you can see here, I've not kept to the very edge of my fabric there. And that's probably because the curves are then a different size. That's probably what's not helped. So let's get this back in again. Over the top of where we were. Good to know how to get ourselves out of things isn't it so there's no pucker on that side and there's no pucker on this side so look that's come out straight and that one there's just going to iron out once that's there so let me just press this sleeve now and i think that we've got our sleeves in so here we are let's just move the sewing machine out of the way we've got our two sleeves there all nicely sewn in to our shirt now now a lot of you are going to want to go ahead and, and do the underarm seams oops yeah do the underarm seams here so i'm trying to make sure i'm not off camera um but what i'm going to say to you is hold off doing that now because we need to do the collar first so first of all we're now going to come together and do the collar so let's get our um let's prep our neck edge first which is what sarah says to do and what she wants us to do is she wants us to run a row of stitching starting at this point here where the front of the placket is and going all the way around here all the way to the other side and finishing at the same place here and it's called stay stitching so it's got to be equal all the way around and it's th that same distance there which is about a quarter of an inch and it's just going to go all the way around here okay so let's put that in i'm just going to use an ordinary stitch length and you'll see why in a minute okay so let me just show you my stay stitching is this line here I've started there, Oops. started here, gone all the way around, I've gone a little bit wide there, but I'm just going to bear that in mind and then come round down to here. What you're going to do now is take your snips and you're now going to snip at right angles to that stitching line, okay, it's like that, up to but not through in little snips. That's why it needs to be equal. If it's not equal, just bear that in mind, but don't go through your stitches. If you need to make them wider, then go back and make them slightly wider. This will help your neck and collar sit on properly, but it feels really scary because you think, well, why am I going to snip through something that I'm trying to save? So if I open that out now, hopefully you can see those little snips. Every couple of eighths of an inch, 
half a centimetre or something, that's all you need. And you're just going up to the stitches, but you're not going through them. Now where I've gone a bit wide, I'm going to just bear in mind that and I'm not going to go too far. I could unpick it and do it again. You're right, I could. And maybe I should. But for now, I'm going to just keep going. So through the yoke is a little bit stiff. And what they do is that, that those snips, those snips help you, help that line to go straight for when you want to attach your collar. So once we've done that, we're now going to work with our cut plait to one side. And we're now going to work with our collar pieces. And the first thing we're going to do on one of them is we're going to fold in towards the wrong side. So this is our right side with our tailor's tack on. Towards the wrong side, you see there's a little straight bit here. If I can show you, a little straight bit there. We're going to fold that bit to the point all the way along. You can finger press it if you want to before you go and press it, but I would press it on the machine, um, on the iron as well if I were you. So just press that edge in just on one of them. I'm sure on both of them. No, just on one of them, yeah. Because that's going to be the inside collar. Right, and now we're going to now put the right sides of our collars together. So we know the right side is the fluffy. Make sure it stays out of your seam line because you don't want to sew over it if you can help it. Oops. Just put those two together like this, matching up the points on the end and the sides and pop your pin in. I just tend to match both sides up first. There's both points because that's the important match point, isn't it? And then we can make sure those raw edges are together. We can now take out our tailor's tacks just by pulling on the threads because we know where we are now. We've got our right sides together and the pins are in to hold it. And we're just going to work along the edge with however many pins we need to feel comfortable. So whatever you need to put in, you do that. And now we're going to sew the bit that we folded back, we are going to sew that down. So we're going to start at this point here, just here, quarter of an inch in, and we're going to sew along to here. We're going to keep our needle in our work. I'm going to do one stitch diagonally across that line because I found that works better when, you, when you're turning things out. So I'm going to start here, start and stop, quarter of an inch here when I'm going to leave my needle in the work. I'm going to t go across the corner 45 degrees, one stitch, Leave my needle in the work, lift my presser foot, and then carry on down here. I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. So let's just do that. And again, I've, pr I've pinned from the wrong side that I want to work from. So make sure you pin from the side where the edge is turned up. You probably can manipulate the pins out, but it just makes it easier if we just take two seconds just to turn them around the other way. Right, okay. So, so folded edge for the edge is in. And I'm going to sew over that first. And that, the stitches. Making sure my needle in my work so I don't go over my pins. And head towards the corner. When I get as far as I think, I'm going to leave my needle in my work, lift my presser foot up. You won't go right to the very edge of the cut of the um you won't go right to the very edge of the point because it's impossible to you won't be able to turn it out um, maybe one more stitch more maybe and then one stitch straight across the corner and then i'm going to come back down the other side i'll show you what that looks like when we've finished starting to distort where my, where my stitching is. Into the corner, stop. I'm going to take one stitch across the corner and then I'm going to come down on that diagonal line. And then reverse at the end. So let 
let me show you what that looks like. And again, you might have your own way of doing this. That's absolutely fine. Or you might have seen somebody else who's got a way of doing it, and that's absolutely fine too. So let me just show you here. So I sewed, I've sewn this flap down. Yeah, that's stitched down and cut and caught. Sewn along here. Then I've done one stitch across the edge, down to the other side, and then again here, one stitch diagonally across the edge, and then down to the other side here. What we're going to do now is we're going to snip. Now you're going to try and take off the bulk. It's not quite a straight line, but if I just draw that line on, that's what I'm going to snip off, okay? You need that for reference to, to show where you're going to go, but we want to get rid of some of this bulk, so I'm going to take that off. Not right up to the stitches. You want a couple of millimetres away from your stitches, and you've got to be careful that you don't pull your threads through when you're turning this out. Okay, so it's going to look like that. And before I do, do any turning out, I'm just going to press this. Okay, and then we're going to now turn this around. So, um, the best way I've found is if you can fold it first and hold it with your finger and then push it through. But then you're going to need to take a pin or something and you're going to need to ease it out. So just put your pin in, in into the stitches, find your stitching line and then you're just going to follow that along. Now you've got to be careful because if you pull too hard on this, you will pull fibres out and you'll give yourself a fluffy, fluffy collar edge. And now if he doesn't like fluffy collar edges, Luna might, or somebody else might, but it depends what design style you're looking for. Maybe that's your design ethic or your design aesthetic. That's the word I was looking for. Okay, so just ease that out nice and gently. And then don't forget we've got that stitch just in the end there that's on the diagonal. So we're just going to ease it out. But as you can see, it does still give a nice point, even though we've got that stitch that's just holding it out. It's just impossible to, um, on these small garments, to get a perfect point if you go in at a point. So you might as well save yourself the trouble anyway. So there's that one. Just, just finger press it. Let's go to the other side now and do the other one. But you see, because these fibres here are so short, if you pull too tightly on it with your pin, as you're trying to get those that corner out, you're going to pull those fibres through to the top, and that's what we don't want you to do. So again, we've got the edge here. Let's just pull that out, make sure that that's out to the very edge. And if you can see your stitches, the indentations for your stitches along here, you know you've, you're at your stitching line. So pull this through here, oops, careful Claire. Nice and steady, don't do this when the kids are around and gonna nudge you, or the dog or the cat. Because you need a steady hand. And just ease that point out. Okay, and again, once you've got it, just finger press it. So what we're going to do now is we're just gonna press this flat making sure we keep that curved edge under and then we'll have a little collar. So let me just go and press this and then we'll show you how that looks. Let me just show you another little tip as well. So we're trying to get the edge that looks like this, not like that. So if it does come like that, just use your fingers to just roll it slightly so you get to the edge and then repress it and that will then make sure that you've got the same collar width all the way along. So can you see? Now that one had just fold, rolled slightly. This side is how I want it to be, where you've just got the stitches lined there. So let me just press this one and I'll show you after I've pressed it again. Okay, so that, I'm better, that's better, I'm happier with that now. So, that's, so we've got a little raw edge sticking out now and we've got the other bit tucked under there. So that's what we're going to be working with. So now what we need to do now is attach this onto our shirt. So we're going to have our shirt right side facing up and we're going to have our collar with the raw edge and we're going to attach that to the neck edge here. So if we fold the collar in half, that's going to give us a centre point. So we make sure we've got the same either side. We have got a little notch that we can see as well. And then on here, we'll have lost our notch, but we know it's in the centre of this pleat here. So we can line that 
um, pin up with the center of the pleat down the middle of the shirt and then we're going to pin it on. Now we're only pinning on through this raw edge. The one that's folded, folded, just keep that out of your way. And then what I would do then is just move slowly around, making sure that your shirt is flat underneath, so no puckers there. And the, the, the cuts should enable you to, to um, the little snips we've done should enable it to, to lie flat as you're manipulating this under your fingers. Hard to show because my big fat fingers are in the way, but I'm just matching up and rolling, moving it round so that the, the sets of raw edges are together. And put a pin in. And then we should get to the end here and that should match up with the start of the placket look and it does. Hallelujah. Right. So let's put a pin in there just to hold that together. And then we're going to work now on the other side. So as you can see, that's all flat. Look underneath there to where the stay stitching line is. And the collar's flat as well. No puckers in there. This is fiddly. If you choose that you want to sew it on by hand, no criticism from me. I mean, in actual fact, you can sew the whole thing by hand if you wanted to. So, and I know a lot of people get a lot of pleasure from doing that. But for those that are wanting a little bit of a speedier um, result, then that's what we'll do. Now, what I've noticed is that that one's this side of the collar here is just going to extend slightly back. So I'm just going to pull it back a little bit and just ease that in because I want them to both to finish. I want both edges of the collar to finish at the edge of the placket. So I'm just going to move that back in a bit with my stitches, with my pins. Oops. Come on, pin, in you go. And I should be able to ease all of that. And it just means I've just gone a bit too much to one side for, or I've done a little bit more seam allowance one side than the other, but it's easy enough just to ease it back in again. Okay, so there we go. So we've got the centre part matched up. We've got the edge of the collar matched up with the edge of the placket. That's going to match up nicely. And then the other side, the edge of the placket is going to match up with the edge of the collar. And yep, you guessed it, we're going to go back to the machine now and we're just going to sew here, quarter of an inch, all the way along here. But we're going to take it really steady like we were doing it when we were did, did put the sleeves in making sure that our raw edges match and that we've not got any puckers underneath as much as we can do, okay? Keep your fingers crossed, folks, we're going in. To make sure that's right. And keeping that, that folded edge, oh, pin out your mouth, Claire. Um, to keeping that folded edge out of the way as well so that it stays on there just nicely. as well just to make sure this is so because of those tucks those snips we've made we should be able to pull this straight pretty much straight and keeping the same seam allowance that should allow the fabric just to manoeuvre underneath the needle and be fine time folks there's no rush apart from me trying not to make the video too long for you <laughs> so let's have a little look keep your fingers crossed for me there's no puppers on the collar itself so that's good that's the first tick in a box When we lift up the collar, we can see that there's no puckers actually on the stitching line either. So we've 
success we've done it so what we're going to do now is we're going to just press this so I'd lay this down this on flat on my ironing board like this and then I would then push with the just the nose of my iron just to push that stitches in we want the we want the and also you could do it on the inside as well we want the seam allowance to go inside the collar okay so when you press it so let me just go and do that and then I'll come back just a couple of things to look out for when you are ironing that's a crease that I've ironed in it's not a thing if you can see your stay stitching here don't worry we can take that out we'll just use a quick unpick to remove that but if you've cut and you and you've so if, if the cuts that you've made in, these cuts here, extend beyond your sewing line into your shirt, you will need to go back and just sew a little bit more with a little bit more of a seam allowance at that point so that you don't see the cuts in the fabric because you don't want to see those cuts. So this one here, I can see that I've got my, I must be right on the verge, but I've not, I can't see any cuts. So I'm going to now take my, my quick and pick and I'm going to take out this stay stitching here all the way along because I don't want that to show on my finished shirt. If you're not bothered about it showing, you can leave it in place if you want to. But for me, I don't want that showing on my shirt. So I'm going to take those stitches out. Um, so let me just do that. And as I say, if you need to just um, tweak your collar to make sure... The other thing you could have done is if you wanted to tack it, you could tack it in by hand as well first um, just to see how you're getting on and just see how it all fits and how it all lays together. So if you get any pinpricks left over from your, like here look, where the stitches have gone through, just give it a spray with your iron, with the water from your iron, that'll relax the fibers and then when you iron it again, those will just come out and it'll just be invisible. And that happened, that works on all of your um, dressmaking as well. So um, it pretty much, the only thing it wouldn't work on, I've got a thread still there. The only thing it wouldn't work on is if you're on like a vinyl or on a plastic leather, a pleather type thing because, or cork, because your, your, your um, marks will be left inside. So now the next thing that we need to do now is we just need to tuck those bits in at the top of the, at the top of the placket. We're going to put a pin it in there just to hold that in place. So we're encasing the raw edges of that seam inside the collar. And then this is hand stitching time, I'm afraid. I think you could probably do it on the machine if you wanted to, but it, it'll be neater if you do it by hand. And you will see it if you take the shirt off and put it on a coat hanger, you would see it. So it is worth taking a little bit of time just to sort that out. And that should then just fold flat. So at the corners here, we're just tucking that in. I've got a few raw edges there. Let me just take those snip, snips and just get some of these threads. And the edge of the collar should end, end right on the edge of the placket. For the buttons and the, the placket is the name for you, for the, where the buttons and the button holes go, that bit that we top stitched earlier. So again here, and all I would do on here is I would just use the stitching line as my secure point and I'd go through a stitch and take a little bite of here and just do a little slip stitch and just stitch that shut. So let me do that and you can do yours if you want to as well and then let's meet back again and we're, we're getting there folks, we're not far off now. So I'll just pop the light on so I hope you've got, not got too many, much shadow here but here we have our finished collar so this is the right side of our shirt because we've got the inverted pleat here and a crease and then a man there's our shirt or a collar all nicely attached and then from the inside where I've slip stitched that shirt you can see that's all nice and neat the one thing that I did do is that I just did a, just where the collar here meets the edge of the placket there I did do a couple of stitches there as well just because otherwise when we've cut into there, if there's over enthusiastic, especially children playing with these and pulling poppers and what have you, there's a chance that that could then rip that down that line of that placket. It shouldn't do, but obviously I'm just doing belt and braces really because we don't want it to be spoiled. Um, so a couple of stitches there when you just start off working and then the same at the other end and that will give you a nice looking, nice looking collar. Give it a good press, as we've said before, we want that nice and edged. Um, nice and neat and then Sarah has said then we're going to just take a little stitch and we're just going to top stitch this shirt all the way along here and end off to there so let me just go and do that make sure it's all lying nice and flat for you folks before you do that 
um, but just start there and then come along here and then down and then that'll hold it st straight for you so that's the next stage I'm going to be doing. So we're on the homeward stretch folks now what we're going to do is we are going to match our underarm seams so we're going to match those together and I would push the seam allowance in towards the sleeve Got some pins so that's my first match point oh. And just want to go in. I'm I'm now going to fold out the um, creased edge, the ironed edge that we folded in, and that should match perfectly. So I'm going to put one pin at the end there because that's the start point. That's it. And then half one, one halfway down just to hold that together for me. You put in as many pins as you're comfortable with and as you need, and then we're going to then match the hem as well here. And then I'm going to put a pin in it on the bottom of the hem. And then one halfway down along here. Now, if you want to neaten these edges, you can do. You can either use pinking shears, um, you know, the crisscross ones that do the triangles, um, after we've sewn it. Um, or you can do a zigzag if you want to. I might just do a little bit of zigzag. Because, some, because around the sleeves is a bias edge, that shouldn't fray. But along here, along the edges it does, um, Sarah hasn't suggested to use a French seam. That's the other thing you can do, but it can be a bit tricky going underneath the arms if you wanted to use a French seam. So let me just um, do the quarter of an inch here. And sometimes you can have um, an overlocking stitch on your machine anyway, or you can overlock the pieces when you first start sewing them. So... In my work before I take my pin out so it doesn't pull it and make it jagged. Just pull this straight towards the underarm. And then what we'll do is we're going to move on and we're going to get close and we're going to leave our needle in right on that stitching line where the sleeves went in before we change direction. So follow your underarm down until you get to that point. Leave your needle in, in absolutely on those stitches and then lift your presser foot and just change your angle and now come down. Take your pins out. So as you can see, I started here, sewed all the way along to here. I left my pin in at that, my needle in at that point there, not this point here where the seam allowances are, but that point there where the needle is. Then I lifted my work up and changed the angle. So that's all straight to there, and then the angle changes from there. So let's do the same on the other side now, match our under arms, pushing our seam allowance towards the arm, towards the sleeve. match the bottom of the, the back and the front where that matches. If one's slightly longer than the other then just 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 lose it because it'll just depend on your seam allowance that you used at your um, on your yoke whether that was exact or slightly out and we can we can level it up so don't worry about that. So here I've got a little bit of a step but I'm not going to worry too much as long as my underarm matches okay and then again at the sleeve edge you don't want it to be too big if you can help it. Um, but occasionally things like that happen. Okay, so let's now sew this again with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Let's do the reverse stitch. Needle in our work. So I'm keeping the body out the way to make sure that this underarm seam is straight. And as we get close, I'm going to then take the pin out and I'm going to sew down until we get to the exact point that we've sewed that under seam. Then I'm going to lift my presser foot up, pivot my work around and drop it back down again. And sew down the other side. Oh, just caught a couple of threads there. So 
So if you have an overlocker and you want to, now would be the time to just zip down here. On here, I think I'm just going to use an over um, a zigzag. So I am just going to do. A I'm just going to use a zigzag just to lead to mine for now. That should do the trick, I think. Just stop those threads from fraying. Just don't go past your stitching line. use an overlocker normally or I'd use French seams if I was making this a garment for myself or for somebody else other than Luna, Luna size ones don't worry too much about okay because they're probably going to get pretty trashed anyway with being played with okay if that's all cut off any loose threads that were just sticking out just to neaten it up that's all I'm doing now Let's just do the other side then bother starting and stopping because we're going to um, reverse stitching because we're going to be turning up the hems on the sleeves and also on the uh, on the body as well so that's going to get finished off then just taking off any whiskers that need taking off okay now we're back to the sleeves now again you can press this now if you want to and press it open but what we, where we um did our pressed edge before I'm just going to fold it over back to the first pressed edge and then I'm going to fold it over again to give us our hem edge and I'm going to try and put a pin in I'm probably going to put it in sideways I'm going to pin from inside the sleeve okay so just like that As I said, if you did it the way before, you'd already have this finished and you'd just match up the edges of your sleeve when you were sewing your underarm seam and it's fine. But I did find that when I did my first one, um, that it was a bit bulky and I could see the edges of the, the raw edges of the seam and I didn't like it. So this is my first time trying it this way, but I think we've got enough to work with. It's going to be fiddly, folks, but um, we can do this. We can do hard things. So let's have a go. Just make sure that seam allowance is staying in there. I'm just just putting the pins in. Try and get rid of any whiskers as you're going round. We can get rid of them after we've, after we've sewn it. So that's trying to keep that quite neat if we can. So just one more. So let's try doing oh, come on pin, in you go. Probably a bit blunt, maybe let's try a different one. So the pins are just going through the seam allowance, uh, through, through the cuff here if you like, okay, and on the side. And then I'm going to sew it from this side. So what I'm going to do is keep this side here out of the way and then just sew on this edge. And actually you can do it, so yeah, this is going to be my preferred method. So let's move my stitch off the zigzag. I'm just going to do just a small hem. So a couple of stitches. Needle in the work. Now I've got to press my foot up, press the foot up because we've got a pin in the way. Just make sure that hem stays down and just roll it towards you. Just you only need a couple of stitches at a time just to work on. And then stop and then roll the sleeve towards you again, taking the fabric away from the back. Take your pins out as you go. so we don't go and break a needle because we don't want to do that. So. And we're just 
just roll it forward again. Can you see? Hopefully you can see this. As you get close, take your pins out. Just roll it forward again. Threads out the way. Can use your awl again if you want to, just to hold it steady. It's a really useful tool. And getting up back towards top, just make sure you're straight. And the stitches under your needle. And go back to the beginning, and then we'll just do a. Okay. So that's my preferred way of doing these sleeves. Then now it definitely gives a nicer finish. I think. You can see in the cuff at the end. Because otherwise you'd have had that showing at the edge, which is then raw edges, which I don't, which I prefer not to have. So let's turn that little sleeve the right way around. It's nearly time for a trying on session, I think. And then let's do the other one. So again, with the other one, we're just going to fold that seam allowance over. It was double turn. So turn it over once and turn it again. I just start at the seam edge because that's where I'm going to start sewing as well. Again, if, you, if you're struggling to work with your pins, just consider putting a few tacking stitches in by hand just to hold it steady for you. Because again, a few minutes extra there can save you a lot of steam coming out of your ears. And what I've just noted as well is that the pleat is on the back of the cuff as well, on the back of the sleeve. So we'll remember that for when we're putting our pleats in as part of finishing off. Feels like that's turned over too many times. Yes, it has. Hold on a second. A little bit fiddly, I know. And I don't always make things look easy on camera. But... Just persevere with it and you'll get there. Or just do it the other way if you want to, which is the simpler way. I do accept that I do make things a little more complicated sometimes. But it's all in the interest of getting a nice finish. Which is what we want, isn't it? Okay. A bit tucked in. You can always use your awl as well just to make sure things are tucked in. Tucked under. If you could turn it over and then you can just smooth things in and around. So we've got a thread there that can come out and that can come out. Pin. Anybody else talk to themselves while they're sewing? I definitely do. But now you see, now I'm videoing it, I can pretend I'm talking to you instead. So then it doesn't matter so much. Right, so back as we go again, I'm going to start again at this seam here, which is the um, start of the underarm seam, line my needle up, I can take that pin out for now, and I'm working towards this one, but I'm just going to take a couple of, oops, pins come out, that's it, I'm just going to take a couple of stitches just to anchor that in, make sure it's out of the way, come back, leave in my work, and then I'll take this pin out here. Roll the sleeve towards you, making sure you keep that bit out of the way. Turn your speed down so you don't run the risk of sewing over your fingers if you need to. I'll just take it steady. Steady you go, the need to result you'll get as well. Back to the beginning, it's a bit stiff there, which is why my machine's making a little bit of a, a noise. Okay, so that's our second sleeve sewn down. There we go, we have a shirt, folks. So what I do now is just go and press these side seams and the sleeves, make sure it's all sitting right, and then we'll work on the bottom um, hem here. 
and that we're turning up quarter of an inch and then quarter of an inch again. So again, I'd go and just turn up quarter of an inch and press it and then turn up your second quarter of an inch and press it again and then we're just going to top stitch it round. So let me just go and press it and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've just turned under my hem quarter and a quarter and as you know we had that little step so what I've done is I've just graded it just between the two so you can always just take your little snips and just sort of ease it off a little bit um, to make it even to make it smooth um, and then that's going to get lost anyway when we when we turn up our, our hem anyway so what I'm going to do now is just pop a couple of pins in to hold this still or you can use clips um, and then I'm just going to top stitch this down along here Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a selection of little buttons. And the, oh, Luna, sit still, that's it. Um, and I've, I've tried to put them against the dark here so that hopefully you can see them. They're all really quite tiny. Um, this one here is seven mil, I think. So it's, it's, it's quite tiny. But again, they look like, a, they look a really nice size on the, on the shirt. I've um, got some other little ones that I've got. I've got a bit of a vintage button box. And you can choose yours then to match what you like. What you like. This one's an old shirt button. You can see it's still got a bit of the fabric left on the back from the shirt. And that one's still, that's still a nice size actually. What size is that one? That one's one centimetre. Um, also what I do sometimes is, is group them together. So when I take them off a shirt, I'll group them together and you'll see you get a couple of little ones off the cuffs and then you get some slightly bigger ones so again you can look at those and see um i did look at that one i did wonder if that might look quite nice on on lunas but um we'll see anyway and then what i do is i've got the, some of these um snap fasteners um they're just press studs what size are these ones zero 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 it says for this size five mil approximately and i find that they're really really a nice size so if I just hold on these up, up against um, the lunar shirt, you can see that this will go on the let's go on the inside there, and it just sits nicely on the inside of the placket. And then once that goes over the other side, I put on the other side, and then I'll sew a button over the top. And then when you close it, it looks like it's buttoned, but it's much easier to open and undo than trying to fiddle with little buttonholes. So that's my preference. They are a little bit fiddly to sew on, but you can, you can, you can manage that. And we've got the, the markings on here as well. And then all I'll do on the back here is in the back half of the cuff is I'm just going to take a little pleat like that when Luna's not wearing her new shirt, and I'll put some stitches and I'll just sew the button on the cuff so it was that one over the top of that and that'll just hold that pleat down um, and that will just hold that down just be careful if you're making your um, shirts for children because I think children under three you've got to be really careful what size you use and or if you use buttons at all um, and you might well just be better off with the poppers um, or you know you can just hold, pull the shirt together and just hold it once once she's got her dungarees on or trousers on and waistcoat whatever you're going to put with it um, then you might find that that's okay so I'm just going to go off and do do the um, do the pleats um, and finalize my buttons and then I will come back to you and we'll we'll, we'll um, just have a bit of a round, um, a round up okay so just to do the tuck at the back I'm just going to just literally halfway between the two is I'm just going to do a little fold make sure the edges of the shirt are together and I'm going to bury my knot on the inside of the fold just like that snip off any length you've got at the end of your knot so it just keeps that nice and neat I'm just going to take a couple of stitches in place where we are. Where's my thimble gun? I've got a thimble here because it does, the needles do tend to. So just use a needle if you need to, just to push your, your, your um, thread through. Just to start it off because you can have enough fiddling with holding the button as well when you first start off without having to hold the pleat shut as well. So that just looks like that. And then what I'm going to do then is start my needle going through and choose my button. And pop it on. Oops, got a knot. Didn't have before. That's it. Just push my needle down. 
and then just decide whether you're going to do a cross or whether you're going to do um, the two sides together just so that you know and try and keep them the same and then we're just going to sew through all the thicknesses now these thimbles are quite good actually they've got like a silicone so it's a bit of a grip on it as well I hope this isn't too dark for you I'm trying to make sure you can see apologies for the light I think light is the bane of most Instagrammers Instagrammers or YouTubers as well life trying to make sure that it's not too light or too dark so again just do a few stitches through your holes you can also press down on your work surface and use your thimble if you need to to make sure that they are sewn on nice and securely and then I'm going to repeat that again with the other side as well um, for those that don't know how to sew snaps on I'm going to just do a couple of I'm just going to just do a snap just so that you can see how how you sew those on if you've not worked with those before because again I do try to aim my videos at beginners to give them a bit of an idea just do a few stitches in place on the back and then you can just snip your thread off okay and then we've got one little button on with the pleat these are strange buttons they've only got three holes but you just sew them as best as you can okay so for sewing on um, press studs I'm going to use the little bit here which has got the indentation in the middle and I'm going to put that on the underneath side and what I've done is I've put a knot in my needle and I've just taken one stitch through my fabric where the placement is. I've just removed my fi fibres from my tailor's tack and that's just given me a marking for where my um, press snap is going to go. And then what you do is you've got these, if I just hold it like that and hope to come with this, you've got these four, these four holes on the outside and that's where you stitch through in order to um, hold this north, south, east and west on those. Hopefully you can see that, a bit fine on the thing. So put once you've got your stitch, just put your needle through one of the holes. Make sure your needle's small enough to go through before you start. I have had that done to before. And then you're going to go through onto the outside of that ring. So hold it just in place with your thumbnail. And then you've got the, and then you're gonna come back up again through the hole. Oops, that's not too far. Okay, like this. Hopefully you can see. And then back down into the work, into your shirt again. And you're going to do four in each hole. So that it's nice and even. That's three. And that's the last one. Right, so when I go down this time, I'm then going to then move across without stabbing my finger. Just, just hold that over the knot. Look, it's just hot covering over the knot. Okay, and then you're just going to come up at the next one. Through there. Got a knot in my thread. There we go. Just pull that just to keep try and keep it as neat as you can on the other side and again just hold it in place with your finger and then we we'll start one stitch through just two stitches through might take a few pokes just to get through into the right hole but just make sure you're there three and one more off this side the reason why we don't go over the top over here to here is because that's going to create bulk on this frame just here too much um, and then when we try and put the snap the other bit of the snap in which looks like this oh don't drop it Claire with the with the bump on the top it's too thick and it won't go it won't sit on properly it won't clip in place so it'll keep coming undone let's move on to the next one then and we'll do four on this one as well just move your shirt around as you work 
pull your thread and try and keep it as neat as you can underneath. We've got a little bit of a bobble there, but there you go, I managed to get it just by pulling on the threads. That's three in place there. That's four. And then on to the last one. Two. That's three. That's four. Okay, and then we're just going to just do a few stitches in place on the back. Just to anchor those threads down. sure everything comes undone. Once we've done that, then we can just snip our threads close. And then for the other one, let's put another new knot in our thread. And then for the bit with the with the point, we've got to remember that when we're sewing, I mean I've sewn one button and not the top because they'll have um, um, the Luna will have a, her shirt open. So I won't have put a button hole on there, so I can take those threads out. They should just pull out fairly easily. Oops, come on. That's it. That was our tail attack from before, if you remember. So we've got our mark on the other side here. And also you can pay attention to which side you want your buttons and your button holes. I've just I've just gone for it on this one, so I'm not too fussed. So let's just make sure the top lines up and make sure that we're about right, which we are. So on the underside of here, take those threads out so I don't get caught up as we're starting to work. So just take a little bite and we're going to th put these, let's cut off those loose ends, and we're going to put the um, other one on the inside because we want that bit to over, so we want the front to over overlap like that. If you sewed it on the outside, you wouldn't be able to get it to, to work together. So just pay attention to that because it's really annoying if you do it the wrong way around. And again on here you've got the let's see if I can show you. You've got the four the four holes again. You're just gonna have to trust me. Um, and again you can then just sew from through from the outside. And because we're gonna have the buttons hiding the press studs, we don't have to worry too much about seeing the stitches or not. You can't really sew these onto the placket before unless you're doing it by hand because you wouldn't be able to do your top stitching. You wouldn't be able to get your your um, machine um, needle close enough to be able to do the to do the top stitching. But again, if we just do those through there. Again, it's just giving you an idea of how to sew these on if you've never sewn these on before. Use them quite a lot in lunar lapping clothes really for the dyes because they're quite quite handy. Okay, move on to the next one. I'm trying to remember to do the same number of stitches in each each hole. Just talk amongst yourselves <laughs> while I'm just doing this, but I just wanted to show you so that it was easy to do if you've not been quite too sure. Then on to the last one. We want these nice and secure anyway because they're going to get pulled around a bit if, the, if dollies are being dressed and undressed all the time, aren't they, by little ones. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to sew the decorative button over the top, which can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, 
but it's worth doing because it does look nice. I mean, obviously, you can, if you've got tiny poppers, you could use poppers. So here we've got our button. So I'm just going to rest that over the top and go through one of the holes and come down the other side. And the way that I do it, because you're going to struggle to go all the way through to the other side because of the other holes, unless you use the same holes again, is I kind of fold the fabric back and then take a stitch through the fabric at the back and then come up through the hole again. So I'm not going through from front to back. I go through the both the holes and then again, oh, come on, keep it in place. That's it, make sure it's over your, over your popper. And then I just take another little thread through, through from left to right there, or right to left. And then you can come up through the hole on your button and what that should mean is that it's it should anchor it down to hide your stitches from your press stud but without having to go all the way through to the other side I'm probably making this look very ham-fisted I do apologize it's just to give you an idea You'll probably have a bit more time than I do when I'm trying to do it fast for you because I'm sure you want to get on with making yours and not watching me make mine. So with a little bit of manoeuvring of your stitches, you can position the button so that it's going to cover your stitches. Of course, the tighter the button gets sewn to the garment, the the more fiddly it gets. But you get the idea. Let's go through this last one. Hold. And then just fold your fabric back as best as you can and just take a bite from underneath. You'd be surprised how quickly that starts to cinch in against your shirt. Just make sure you can go back. More stitches. It's quite secure on there. So then when I come through the button this time, what I'm going to do is take a few stitches in place just here underneath. Oops, dropped my needle. Thimbles do make you a bit ham-fisted when you're trying to do this, but they do save getting blood on your work. I do believe that. Okay. And then I tend to just try and go through to the other side and that then just gives it a little bit to hold on to. And then you can snip your threads close. So just, just done the one just to try and show you. Hopefully I've got that on camera. I just realised I was off camera a bit. So then what you do then is that just clips into there. Oops like that and when I've got the other ones on as well you'll see that that then will look quite nice once it's on so I've done this one open because she's going to have an open neck on hers and you obviously you could do all of them the same if you wanted to depending how formal you wanted the shirt to look but yeah let me just go off and finish doing these and then um we'll be all sorted but it's looking really cute hope yours does too so there we go folks all finished Here's Luna in her lovely pink gingham shirt, complete with pleats and buttons on the back of her cuff, the bias yoke and the collar, and then the buttons with the press studs that I was just showing you how to do to finish those up. So again, if you've, um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me today. Um, if you've got any suggestions for any other ones that you want to see, then just let me know and I'll see what I can do. Um, but I've enjoyed sewing this with you and I hope you have too. Any comments you've got, any feedback, please pop it in the comments below. And I'd be really grateful if you'd be a subscriber as well. I know that um, it might not mean that much to you, but to me it means the world. So I really appreciate it to all my subscribers. And thank you very much for coming along. And I hope you enjoy stitching your very own Alfie shirt. Have a great day everybody.